Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdurrahim here with you. So from today we are going to start the quantification of mitral regurgitation. There are different parameters available to quantify mitral regurgitation and uh, whenever we are going to have a patient with MR, sometimes we need to apply all of them. Sometimes we just rely on one or two parameters. Some parameters we can use in uh, some patients, some parameters we can use into the other patients, okay? And uh, I will go into, but as a sonographer or as a physiologist, we need to know all the parameters in detail. I will definitely go in uh, detail of all the parameters in different vlogs. So today we are going to start from the main two parameters. One is the vena contracta and the other one is uh, proximal isovelocity surface area or in short, we call it PISA method. So uh, before starting the thing, I will just explain you a bit more uh, about the mitral regurgitation jet. So whenever you are going to have a mitral regurgitation or regurgitation anywhere, maybe a tricuspid, aortic or pulmonic regurgitation, you will see that there are two chambers involved in, in a regurgitation. One is from where the flow is coming. That's the one which called sender. The other one where the flow is coming is known as receiver. So in mitral regurgitation or sender is LV, that the flow is coming from the left ventricle to the left atrium, which is a receiver. Okay, so MR is coming into the left atrium. So that's why the left atrium in this case is, as works as a receiver. So whenever a jet comes, uh, like whenever there is mitral regurgitation, so we see a jet of mitral regurgitation. That jet is, um, you know, consists of three main components. One is the flow convergence. The flow convergence, this part of the jet, you are going to see it in the sender. Okay, this is the only part of the jet which you will see within the sender chamber. Okay, so in, for example, mitral regurgitation, flow convergence, you are going to see it in left ventricle. You need to keep in mind, just close to your mitral leaflets, but into the left ventricle. Then the next part, just after the leaflets, we call it neck of the jet or um, uh, vena con the narrowest portion after the leaflet is known as vena contracta. So this is the vena contracta of the jet. Then the body of the jet comes in. So the third part is the body of the jet. So three main components you need to keep in mind because if you are going to do any sort of quant quantification, for example, PISA or vena contracta, you need to know these very well. Okay. So let's start from the vena contracta. So as I described, vena contracta is the narrowest portion of a, a jet just after the leaflet. Okay. So for example, in uh, mitral valve case, wherever your leaflet is coapting, just, uh, just below the leaflet towards the left atrium, you will see the narrowest portion of the regurgitant jet and you are going to measure it and this will call a vena contracta width. Uh, the recommended thing is that you are going to do the vena contracta in parasternal long axis views. Sometimes we do it in uh, apical views, but this is not recommended. You should be using it in parasternal long axis view. Don't try to use the vena contracta, especially in two chamber view, because you are going to overestimate the, uh, the regurgitation. Then the next part is that the vena contracta is not valid where you are having uh, multiple jets. Okay. Uh, but another thing is that vena contracta is uh, also reliable even in uh, eccentric jets as well. So you can have vena contracta in centrally and eccentric jets both, and it can help you to determine how, uh, how much is the severity of mitral regurgitation okay so and it's not flow dependent so it's, it's a very good method to use i will give you the more tips in uh, details once we are on the presentation so now we move on to pisa pisa like uh, proximal isovelocity surface area so i still remember when we were studying we were given an example and i still remember it i don't know much of physics but um, you know they when we were studying pisa uh, they would give us an example of um, you know, wash basin where, uh, you know, you had a basin and then there is, um, there is a drainage pipe attached at the base of the basin. So what happens is that all the flow, like all the uh, water from different areas of the basin converts at the point where our, um, um, you know, drainage pipe, pipe is attached, attached. So it, all the flow comes in there and you will see that the flow start converging, the water start converging at that point. So the velocity will uh, at that point will be very high. So you will see that spherical shape um, uh, water um, uh, drops. You will be you will see it there. 
so that's the main part of pizza that's the that's the same thing you are going to do it once you are going to measure the pizza for example in mitral regurgitation the flow from all the ventricle comes and converts at the same point where our um, sorry where our regurgitant area is for example this one is over regurgitant area okay so all the flow from here and here will come and converts at this point okay so you will see some uh, spherical shape here and you are going to get the radius of that one i will show it how you are going to do it then you will get uh, you will use the formula and you will get the um, uh, ero which is effective regurgitant orifice and that gives you an idea like how much is the severity of mitral regurgitation and um, one important point is that once you are going to do the vena contracta you don't you don't need to change the baseline okay because once you will change the baseline it will increase the color okay In, increase the color flow so you are going to actually overestimate the regurgitation okay and uh, once you are doing the pizza you need to take the baseline down okay so down or up so you need to take the baseline towards the regurgitation you will use the rule of thumb if your regurgitation is coming downward so you will take the baseline down if your regurgitation is going upwards you will take the baseline upwards so that's a very important point most of us do this mistake when we are doing a transthoracic echo or toe we get confused where we need to take the baseline keep in your mind the rule of thumb okay so once the regurgitation is coming downwards you will take the baseline down once it going upwards you will take the baseline up for example in uh, mitral uh, you are in uh, apical views and you are seeing the mitral regurgitation so for the mitral regurgitation because the uh, jet is going downwards so you will take the baseline down the recommended baseline is 40 so you will take it to to the 40 because all the guidelines are followed by the 40 so you will use the number 40 which is good for you so 40 uh, you will use it downwards and for example in the same patient or the other patient you are going to do a pizza for the aortic regurgitation so the jet is going upwards into the left ventricle okay in the three chamber or five chamber view so you will take your baseline up same like toe if you are going to do a mitral regurgitation jet in um, uh, major mitral regurgitation pizza in toe so you will see the regurgitant jet is going upwards okay because your atria is up here in toe so you will take your baseline upwards so keep this point in your mind this is very important and most of us does the mistake and even the experienced sonographers they forget sometimes so just keep the rule of thumb in your mind and it will work for you okay now i will go on to the presentation and i will give you some important points of these um, two methods and also i will explain that like, how we are going to do these methods okay thank you very much let's come on to the presentation now okay so we are going to start from the vena contracta vena contracta as i explained you earlier is the narrowest portion of the jet as it emerges from the orifice after the valve leaflets with highest velocity so this is the narrowest portion just after the leaflet it's going to be here okay so you measured it here this is the toe image and you can see it here the leaflets are coopting somewhere around here and this is the narrowest portion after the leaflets okay you need to keep an eye here that you should not be changing anything in the color not the baseline or not the scale most of us what we do the mistake is that we do uh, we do the vena contracta same as we do the pizza so we take the baseline down don't do that one otherwise you are going to overestimate it okay so you should not be changing your baseline or color scale and uh, vena contracta is not valid in multiple jets in this patient you see there are multiple jets one jet is this one one this one so if you are having multiple jets you can just get some idea from a bigger jet like how big is it but you can't really merge these two jets like for example one is 0.5 and the other one is 0.3 and you say oh vena contracta is 0.8 no you can't do that one you will just use the bigger jet just to give you an idea but it's not valid in multiple jets so i'll give you the important points let me tell you vena, vena contracta works equally well for central and eccentric jet however it is dependent on geomet uh, orifice geometry understanding mr severity if there are multiple jets and if there is markedly elliptical or non circular orifice shape as um, often seen in secondary mitral regurgitation so these are the important things about um, uh, vena contracta i'll show you some important points as well so these are the important points 
you should be doing it in parasternal long axis view you can zoom the image to get a better orientation and also you can go slowly slowly frame by frame and you can see wherever you see a better vena contracta it's not recommended like on what phase of systole you are going to measure it so you can see it where you find a better vc and clear vc you can measure it and also uh, one more thing that it's going to be more reliable if you see all the three components of the jet for example you are seeing the pisa radius neck or vena contracta or also the body body of the jet if you are seeing all three components then it's going to be more reliable advantages as i told you already that this is independent of flow rate and driving pressure for a fixed orifice okay it can be used on both like eccentric and central jet so and it's reliable and it's less dependent on technical factors and uh, and it, it's it's an easy one to differentiate from a mild to severe one if it's less than 3 uh, cm you are going uh, 0.3 less than 0.3 cm then you are going to call it mild if it's more than 0.7 cm or 7 mm you are going to call it severe mitral regurgitation pitfalls which you need to keep in mind this is prob uh, this one is problematic in uh, multiple jets conversion zone need to be visualized for adequate measurements so these are important points overestimation when mr in mr not hollow systolic this is very important point this one okay because you are just going to measure it in one frame you are going to get the vena contracta in one frame so if for example a patient is having mr only in one or two frames for example in uh, mitral valve prolapse what happens is that the mr only comes in the late systole so you just get a big vena contracta there and you just call it severe no you, you should not be doing it then you will use the other parameters alongside with this one okay so because uh, this one you are assuming that the mr is happening throughout the cardiac cycle okay so if it's happening only in one uh, uh, frame of the cycle then it could be only mild mr but you are getting it as severe okay so you should take care of this one then we'll move on to our uh, next thing which is pisa uh, proximal iso velocity surface area uh, i explained you a bit about it and uh, now i'll just go through it quickly pisa method or calculation of mr assumes that there is slow flow convergence in systole around one leaking orifice of the mitral valve as such we can assume blood flow converges in a hemispherical shape as it goes from the left ventricle towards the left atrium okay so let's take this one so we we are saying that the flow convergence is this one so this is going to be your pisa radius okay so you need to get the radius here okay once you get the radius then you can use this formula to get the ero this is the thing we are going to measure ero effective regurgitant orifice area and uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to decrease your elicing velocity to get a better pisa radius so the recommended velocity i already told you is around 40 so you see you need to use the rule of thumb so the regurgitation is happening downwards so you take your baseline down okay once you see a better um, uh, pisa you measure that pisa and then you will use this formula like a continuity equation and then you will get the uh, ero uh, for example this one although we don't see a very very proper jet here but we can see a adequately better uh, pisa radius so you measure the radius it's 1.3 by the way a shortcut is if your pisa radius is more than 1 then there are chances that the mitral regurgitation would be severe again you are not uh, talking about um, like if it's only uh, it's not hollow diastolic then it's going to be different so you are going to overestimate it okay so the mr should be uh, hollow systolic so you get this one pisa radius then the elicing velocity is 37 cm you get that one this is your mr peak velocity you get the peak velocity or vti as well and then for ero you will use this formula ero is equal to 2 pi pisa r square into elicing velocity divided by mr velocity so the your formula will be like this this is the uh, value of pi this is 2 into pi and this was your r which is radius square you take the square of this one and then this is your elicing velocity divided by mr velocity this was your 
mR velocity 539 centimeter. Keep in mind that once you are using centimeter, everything should be in centimeter. If you're using millimeter, then everything should be in millimeter. So you need to keep the um, uh, thing like what you are going to use it centimeter or millimeter or whatever okay then you uh, you know just um, use the calculator and finalize this equation and you will get the ero of 0.72 if ero is more than 0.4 it's called severe if it's if ero is less than 0.2 then it would be mild and this uh, this criteria is for uh, a primary mitral regurgitation if the mitral regurgitation is secondary then your ero more than 0.2 will also be considered as severe regurgitation next one this is another example in a toe patient so just to show you about the baseline you see we took the baseline up here okay so that's why you are uh, seeing the, the more the baseline is up so you get the pisa radius of one elizing velocity of 37.1 upwards okay then you get the MR velocity, the peak velocity is 6.2 and then you use the formula again and you get the ERO of 0.38, okay, which is almost severe. Now important points for PISA. So, you know, th these are the important points you need to keep in mind whenever you are going to do the PISA. So the elizing velocity should be uh, around 40 centimeter you know nearby to 40 and uh, whenever you are going to use toe or tte you need to keep the rule of thumb in your mind so i explained many times before rule of thumb means wherever the regurgitation ha happening you are going to take the baseline towards that side okay this method is reliable for quantifying a single centrally directed jet in patients with multiple mr jets or those which are eccentric PISA method is not reliable. This is very important point and you need to keep this one in your mind. And again, this is another very important thing that this is just one of many ways to quantify mitral regurgitation. So this is again, you know, once you're going to quantify mitral regurgitation, this is one of the methods. So you need to look at different methods again to, to do it, okay? And this is all I think I explained you already about the PISA method and Vena Contracta. Now in the next vlog, we will discuss another parameter of severity. Thank you. Bye-bye.